Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to tell you all about WWE's morale-boosting meeting ahead of WrestleMania, including Triple H returning backstage. On top of that, we have some potential WrestleMania spoilers, as a couple of missing talents have been spotted in Dallas, and WWE have also turned a major Raw star babyface rather quietly. But we're going to kick things off by talking about Randy Orton, his controversial words on NXT wrestlers, who... He says, don't know what the F they're doing. Very good. I'm Andy Murray. I'm Michael Sidgwick. And this is the news. Right, let's start with Randy Orton, shall we? <coughs> Actually, you know what? Let's start just by saying that later on today, it's a two news video day, baby. We've got a second one coming to you later this afternoon, including a major contract scoop exclusive that you won't get anywhere else. So stay logged to the channel for that. But yes... We're going to kick things off with Randy Orton. He's been at it. He doesn't care, does he? He doesn't give a single hoot. Uh, he's done an interview with Pat McAfee on the Pat McAfee Show, of course. Um, and he's talking... The most noteworthy stuff to come out of it is how he talks about NXT and uh, how they train wrestlers in the WWE developmental system and how maybe they don't do the best job of emphasising just how important it is as a wrestler to protect your opponent. So... One of the things uh, Randy did here was talk about Vince's recent appearance on the Pat McAfee show when Vince said it should be the number one priority of, of, of pro wrestlers. And he's dead right on that. A lot of other stuff in that interview that maybe wasn't so on the money, but with that, he certainly was. Um, kick things off. Here's a quote from Randy. Uh, There's an art to what we do and a lot of guys have lost that art. When Vince was on, he talked about the, your number one priority above all being protecting your opponent. That's not taught necessarily in NXT. I know that because I've been in the ring with guys that came from NXT and they don't know what the F-U-C-K they're doing. It's unfortunate, but it's just how times are changing. Then he went on, he cited his frequent rival Edge as somebody who is the total opposite. Uh, I can trust this guy, Edge. Uh, I can give this guy my body in the ring and tell this story and I don't have to, in the back of my head, worry about him only being concerned with looking cool in the ring and hitting the F out of me and taking my head off. Edge made me realise that I can go 45 minutes with a guy who knows what the F he's doing. Uh, wh where are these other guys that know what the F they're doing? So, strong criticisms, absolutely, of the NXT developmental process. You can't imagine anyone who wasn't in Randy Orton's comfortable position uh, would be able to get away with saying this stuff. But, you know, Randy Orton, uh, as a guy, as a personality, I really like it when he just cuts loose and uh, he doesn't give a damn. Yeah, it's pretty it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's very candid as well. You expect nothing less from Orton, as uh, Murray pointed out. Um, he is very much in a comfortable position and he's got a disposition in which he doesn't really care about offending anyone. Strange that he would cite the 45 minute match with Edge considering one of them emerged from that having suffered a serious injury but realistically that was an outlier yeah. Randy Orton if nothing else like he's an incredibly safe guy so much so that I think his reputation is split amongst the wrestling fandom some people think he's an all time great some people think that he's worked what 20 years worth of three and a half star matches you know, but the guy's an authority on this matter. He's safe as houses, like mechanically absolutely prodigious and a master of doing things. Not that he does a lot of them, but what he does, safe as houses, execution wise, is brilliant. Um, yeah, this is a hell of an indictment um, on the NXT Performance Center, which still operates as is despite the on screen changes to NXT 2.0. I've seen a million, one million missed catches. Um, it just feels like he's got a point. And it's funny that's coming from Randy Orton specifically because he's one of the more cherished WWE guys who certain Twitter accounts who don't deserve oxygen on this news video would sort of uh, revere and lionize. And he's the one talking about how actually the WWE system is the one that creates lots of errors and injuries. So that's funny. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Randy Orton, I always say, I think he's simultaneously the most over and underrated wrestler of all time because his critics will go in to an absurd degree and act like the guy's never had a great match. But on the opposite side, his supporters will trumpet him as one of the goats, which I don't know, man. That, there's a long list of wrestlers I would put ahead of him in that conversation. But yes, absolutely. One of the safest wrestlers probably in WWE history. Somebody everyone loves working with by all accounts. Uh, and I love him in interview situations like this. He's obviously wrestling at WrestleMania, tag team title match. It's all good. Anyway, and he's hot tagging the business at the minute as well. He is, man. Like, they, they've they really found something with this riddle act, whether it's kind of to your taste or not. Like, they've got palpable on screen chemistry. They're really over. He seems to be having a good time. And he 
he had a really good mustache for a while as well, which is always a boost. Anyway, uh, let's move over to the backstage meeting held in WWE ahead of WrestleMania. Fightful Select, no crap, just sap. He said the thing the other week, it was awesome. Uh, coming through with the scoop. Uh, Triple H was there, back behind the scenes in WWE, and that's a big deal because a lot of talent hadn't seen Triple H since August. Of course, he suffered the cardiac event in September. Rough time for him, but he was back for this meeting. He was introduced uh, by John Laurinaitis. Uh, it was described as an emotional scene. He went through some of his recent health struggles, and then he introduced Nick Khan, uh, WWE president, of course, uh, and chief revenue officer, who he introduced uh, as a friend of over 10 years. Fair play. Um, Khan spoke a little bit more, gave some positive news, revealed that WWE wrestlers will now be able... <laughs> I mean, this is something that should never have happened in the first place, right? But it revealed that WWE wrestlers will now, once again, be allowed to earn money on top of their salaries. Uh, according to Fightful, that means things like uh, third-party platforms, which were controversially banned in September 2020, sparking a bunch of different issues. Uh, cameos included, autograph signing sessions, and scripted and unscripted programming are both included in that as well. Talent in attendance have described the meeting as a unanimous success, uh, with one quipping that it was a great way to start WrestleMania 38 weekend. So yeah, little morale booster. I'm not going to shower them with too many flowers here because I don't think they should have ever banned the third party thing in the first place. But I mean, on its own, removed from all that, this is a good thing. If, yeah, I guess. Like if my employer turned around to me and said, good news, Michael, we're going to pay you this month. I'd say, <laughs> I would say, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I my, hope so, yeah. It's, I'm, <laughs> I'm stipulated to be get, to be getting paid in my contract and they were in their contracts as independent contractors they had the right to do this all along so that's my comment yeah there you go uh let's move over to wrestlemania 38 what do i mean move over it's all we're talking about it's wrestlemania weekend Maybe spoilers, kind of, maybe, sort of, maybe not really, but make your own mind up. PW Insider's Mike Johnson coming through with a report stating that in Dallas this weekend, spotted in the city, Bailey and Asuka. Both have been away for ages. July last year, differing circumstances, both injured. Asuka wrestled at Money in the Bank, but then took some time off. Shoulder surgery, dental procedures, lots of stuff going on with her. Bailey tore her ACL while training for the return to live attended shows. Really brutal for somebody who was one of the standout performers of the horrible empty arena era oh, that God. is now fortunately behind us. But yes, both have been speculated for a return for a while. Um, Bailey in particular was given a nine month window. So, you know, that lines up quite perfectly. Uh, no word on whether or not they'll actually appear on WrestleMania 38, but they've been brought in for the show and with speculation swirling that they are due to return soon, maybe we'll see them on Raw next week. Maybe we'll see them on Smackdown. One thing to note, uh, Alexa Bliss has not been spotted in Dallas. Uh, Mike Johnson notes here that he's going to get like 100 emails about Alexa Bliss anyway, so he's just pointed that out. She's not been spotted yet. Again, none of this necessarily means that they're going to show up, but they are in town, so it does open it up as a possibility. Yeah, I'm going to be nice, you know. I'm going to put over somebody. Um, I've got a sidekick, and his name is... Uh... Michael Hamlet. Oh, that little guy. He's like the Robin to my Batman, if you like. And he's got a fantasy booking scenario because he's been lining up the dates. He's a Bailey super fan. Absolutely loves Bailey. A huge um, admirer of her work. And I don't know if he's just fan casting this or if he's just got some delusions, God bless him. But he reckons all along, and he's been saying this, that Bailey and Asuka will be added to the four-way tag and they will end up winning it at WrestleMania. So that is potentially something mm -hmm. to look out for. Or just, you know, the delusions of a E-drum. <laughs> He is a stat. We do call him Stamflet for hey, a reason. Yeah, he loves we? it. He'll never ever give it up. Hailing from Stamford, Connecticut, Michael Hamflet. Anyway, uh, our final question. Is it our final? No, it's not a question. It's a story. It's Friday. Cut me some slack. I'm just thinking about alligators and Burger King. That's all I think about on a Friday. Uh, yes, so our last story here. Again, from PW Insider. WWE are now considering Bobby Lashley a babyface, which might have been apparent coming out of the almost angle even though it wasn't like it's not like they presented Lashley in this particularly heroic light on Raw uh, they just present, pushed him opposite a heel basically but now WWE will be internally going forward with Bob as a heel um of course he returned on Raw he'd last been seen at Elimination Chamber where he was taken out of the match due to injury protocol that was to cover a real life shoulder situation there was reports of him needing to go for surgery but he's back now he's wrestling a moss at wrestlemania the angle established if nothing else that bobby lashley is a man capable of taking the giant off his feet um 
I think it's on it's on night two, right? That match. I, I've got uh, any idea. It's 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 a cluster at the moment. But yes, uh, there you go. Big Bob's a baby face. I love Bobby Lashley. I've always loved Bobby Lashley. Cool. Yeah, this is absolutely overdue. The second they put the guy in a suit as part of her business, even though the creative was rotten, I think they worked like Apollo Crews for like what three months yeah. straight. Like it was a terrible storyline, but the look. The aesthetic, the presence of the Hurt Business was incredible. Um, seeing Bobby Lashley in a suit, well, he just looked like an absolute megastar. And I think a lot of people gravitated towards Bobby Lashley and supported him kind of as a babyface when he was still cast in the heel role. If I recall correctly, um, he did quite really good numbers uh, when he was WWE Champion ahead of WrestleMania season. And I think a lot of people were just really into him at the show itself. Um, yeah, this is an overdue development. Um, Lashley versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam is a big, big match. Um, I don't know if they would quite entrust him to be the guy to beat Roman Reigns, given his age and what have you. Um, but the, the match would rule. The match would rule, and Lashley as a babyface would be an absolute wrecking machine. I would look forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. I love Bobby Lashley across the board. I've said that like four times on this video, but I'm going to say it again. I love Bobby Lashley. He's class. You know what else I love? Stupid Twitter questions. We do this every Friday. You know the drill. Um, I consulted with the brain trust behind me here. Uh, look at these guys. To, to, look at them. How cool, it's the shagging team. They're here. Um, I put up a tweet every Friday, if you've not seen this, where I ask for dumb questions. Leave logic. Leave insight at the door. Pure carnage. It's Friday. We don't care on a Friday. We're like Randy Orton. Um, our first one today, and this one is specifically for you, Michael. Oh, uh, yes. Comes from Knack, who asks, are you naturally bald? No. There you go. I am, however. Um, but, you know, if you look closely, you can see the line. But, yeah, this is all natural, baby. I'd get a better wig, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I, look at this. I'd get a better wig. I don't think you could find a wig that would fit my gigantic, bald scalp. But, you know, maybe one day. Like Kevin from The Office showing up at that wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. That scene where he babes his feet in the ice. Oh, God, I'll never use hotel ice ever again after that. Um, our second question of the day, and this... this uh, I mean, this is this is a twofer, right? This is a twofer. This, this blew my head off. Uh, Andrew Harris asked us the following. Why won't you reveal who's really behind Big Seasoning? You're not an AEW shill or a WWE shill. You're a Big Seasoning shill, right? Which is a funny question in and of itself. Control your narrative. Uh, uh, who is really behind Big Seasoning, Michael? Who do you think? I, 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 Nigel Nestle is probably top of my list, but... I think the answer is EC3. <laughs> what if it's Colonel Sanders? He keeps that blend of herbs and spices a secret. How many is there, 11? I, I think so. Yeah, potentially. Colonel Sanders, maybe Norse, if you're in the UK. Potentially. Anyway, what about Patax? They, they make a lot of like seasonings and curry sauces and stuff. It might be them. I don't know, I don't know. We're out of control. Our final question comes from John Barker. <laughs> who's just concocted the perfect piece of fantasy booking, the best thing I've ever heard. Uh, in an alternate universe, uh, the Fiend was never defeated for the title. He still holds the belt. It's him at the title unification match, and it's Bob Holly. Bob Holly! Bob Holly! Give me the belt, and I'll beat everybody. Who goes over? It's been four years since either man lost. Oh my god. So what you have here is the classic tale of the um, irresistible force meeting the immovable <laughs> object. Like the fiend is invincible; he doesn't he doesn't even sell. Like you cannot hurt the fiend because he is pain itself. <laughs> um, Bob Holly is a wrecking machine because you know what happens. You gotta give him the barrel, and he beat everybody. More than the match itself, I'd be so interested in the promo. Like how would Bob Holly approach an entity like the fiend? Like maybe the fiend, maybe he gets. God, I think Bob will get confused, man. I think Bob will get confused. And be like, I don't know which one of you's gonna show up. The swamp guy, Mr. Rogers, the clown. Which one of you's gonna show up? <laughs> it don't matter to me, Bray Wyatt, because I will break your ass in half, you little goth head. <laughs> so I think the finish of the match, right, is uh, <laughs> right. The, the, the killing each other, like a very manly match, for, like what, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. Because neither neither of them can die. Like, Enoki on an island has got absolutely nothing on this. <laughs> the only weakness I can sort of determine um, between either man is that Bob Holly was there. Remember BB? Yes, Barbara Bush. Back in the day, didn't they have a little fling? I, I think so. I'm pretty so. sure they did, but if I, if I stand corrected, maybe it was somebody else. I'm pretty sure Bob Holly had a little thing for BB, so maybe he's got a little thing for blondes. And maybe, just maybe, you will get distraction finished because it would be WWE by the returning 
fiendish goddess, Alexa Bliss. One, two, three, the greatest match of all time is ruined by a distraction finish because it's, uh, it's the Fiend. Goes from eight stars to minus eight stars in a flash. Yeah. This is the, it, like, if I'm a billionaire money mark, if I wake up as that tomorrow, I'm putting this match together. I used to respect Tony Khan until I realized he hasn't booked this, so. Useless, idiot, dumb man. If you can come up with something as good as what John's concocted here, look out for the thread next week. We'll pick you up. Anyway, thank you for joining us on this news video. Like I said earlier, we will have another one later on today, including an exclusive contract scoop that you can't get anywhere else. You can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. We'll be doing more questions later on as well. So if you want more bollocks, there you go. WhatCultureWWE on Twitter. Where can you find Michael Sidgwick? M. Sidgwick. And you can find me at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for hey, I'll see you later on today. Goodbye. Flat F Friday.